Tradition tells us that Our Lady appeared in an oak tree in the churchyard of the original Catholic Church to a parishioner and that a well began to flow at which miracles were wrought and which became noted for cures from blindness. The origins of the well date back to the 10th century. The well water is available still today from the Anglican Church. Prior to the removal and destruction of the shrine, it was described as a statue of Our Lady in robes of sacrament and with stones, with a veil of lace embroidered with pearls, other precious jewels, and gold and silver, an iron screen both before and behind, with canopy and hangings, sticks for candles and offerings of fine account for such a church. We did strip the image which we found to be of wood, in colour like ebony, of ancient workmanship, only save the upper part, which was plated with silver. The heretics and apostates of the Reformation understood that they had to destroy all vestige of devotions to Our Lady, as she stood like a bulwark against the inroads of their heresy. A total of 84 shrines were destroyed in England and Wales, and hundreds of statues and other images of the Virgin were burned. Among them was the Black Madonna of Wilsden. You may burn the statues, deface and desecrate the churches, but you can never extinguish the true faith, neither then or now. 1886, a Catholic priest was sent to establish yet again a parish in Wilsdon. From humble beginnings, this parish flourished with the daily offering of the holy sacrifice of the Mass. A new statue of Our Lady came into being, carved from the oak of the original tree in which she had appeared all those centuries before. It was completed and blessed by Cardinal Vaughan in 1892. By 1931, a new large, beautiful Romanesque church had been built, not only as a parochial church, but also to serve as a national shrine for the Catholics of England. The shrine reached its modern day zenith in 1954 with the coronation of Our Lady in Wembley Stadium, where 94,000 people prayed to the Mother of God. Both crowns had been designed and made by London craftsmen, using only the finest gold and stones. That for the Holy Child after the manner of a medieval imperial crown. That for Our Lady in the style of a late Gothic queenly diadem. The crowns had been made possible by the gifts of donors from all over the world. At the conclusion of the pageant, the statue was borne from the arena shoulder high on a float. The float was decked with flowers and was the responsibility of 200 seminarians. The procession was 2,000 strong as it's made its way to the shrine in Wilsdon. Cardinal Griffin made Wilsdon the center of the Archdiocese celebration of the Marian year of 1954. Some 60,000 pilgrims flocked to the ancient shrine in that year, and once again Our Lady graced Wilsdon with her presence, and many favors were received by the faithful, according to manuscript accounts. The Catholics of the 1950s would have a bad shock if they walked into the church today. A table replaces the main altar. No sanctuary and altar are the resting place for Our Lady, but rather she stands alone in an artificial heaven. No reference to the sacrifice of her divine son is found by her. Yet she is tended with love for devotion to her the Mother of God remains as a lasting expression of the faith of countless souls, souls who rely upon her more and more 
as the modern day church disintegrates around us. Mary, the mother of God, will keep us in the Catholic faith. She is neither liberal, nor modernist, nor ecumenical. She is impervious to all errors, and with even greater reason to heresies and apostasy. Once again, she is our bulwark against the errors that surround us. A Lady of Wilsdon, pray for us. Amen. 